Hey YouTube fam, did you hear the sparkle creed today? I'll play it for you. It takes just a second to load on my phone. Of the sparkle creed, I believe in the non-binary God whose pronouns are plural. I believe in Jesus Christ, their child, who wore a fabulous tunic and had two dads, and saw everyone as a sibling child of God. I believe in the rainbow spirit who shatters our image of one white light and refracts it into a rainbow of gorgeous diversity. I believe in the church of everyday saints as numerous, creative, and resilient as patches on the eighth quilt, whose feet are grounded in mud and whose eyes gaze at the stars in wonder. I believe in the calling to each of us that love is love is love. So beloved, let us love. Okay. So, the letters community is thinking that they are coexisting and progressive and inclusive and maybe even hip, I don't know. Like they are the ones moving forward and evolving while the rest of us stuffy Christians follow old worn out rules and they're the ones enlightened and moving forward. The thing that is the issue is that God is the, t is the same yesterday, today, and always. So while they're, they think they're enlightened and progressive, they've, they're just deceived by the enemy. And he's laughing all the way to the bank, so to speak. So it's heartbreaking to hear them when they think that they are on track and they're doing the right thing and they're letting people be people in all the ways that people can be people these days. And they're loving them and love the one you're with and there's not rules, there's not boundaries. The only rules and boundaries they have is just to walk in love and accept everyone no matter what they bring to the table. So it's sad to hear this because they actually think that they're right and that we are the wrong ones, we're the rigid ones, we're the stuffy ones. And little do they know that they have fallen into the plan of the enemy, hook, line, and sinker. They have fallen into the plan of the enemy. And it's one thing to do that and it's another to think that you're in faith, following God and Jesus, our non-binary God, and Jesus with two dads, and the rainbow, and whatever else they said. Um, we move from the white light to the rainbow. The rainbow is very special. The the rainbow is God's promise never to flood the earth again. Now, he will judge the earth. And uh, we're very close to that, as we can see by this little nugget, the Sparkle Creed. Um, we are moving towards uh, judgment like Sodom and Gomorrah, like big time. Um, so they're using the things like faith in Jesus and the Father and the things of God but they're twisting them all. And I got a little secret letters community that you're not going to tell God how it is in his house. You're not going to tell God how it is in his house. Now there are, the letters community is not the only people that do that. People in adulterous remarriages do that. People in fornication do that. People with other sin do that because they're seeing their sin as no big deal. 
And how can God, how can God judge this? Or how can God say this is wrong? How can God send me to hell on this one point, including unforgiveness? How can God send me to hell for unforgiveness? Well, because the Bible says in Matthew 6 that if we don't forgive, we're not forgiven. If we're not forgiven, sin doesn't go to heaven, guys. You've got to understand this. We're not going to tell God how it is in his house. He's going to tell us how it is in his house. That's why he sent his son to take our sin so that we could spend eternity with him. There isn't a lot that we have to do to spend eternity with God. He did most of it, but we have things that we need to do too. We need to walk in obedience. We're to abide in him. We're to resist sin. We're to, you know, take up our cross, deny ourselves daily. We're to do some things. We live in a very sinful, sinful fallen world. And we're very sinful fallen beings. And so we can't assume that we know. And I've done it too. I've done it too in the past. God, how can this be? God, how can this be? Well, thank heaven I have grown up and out of that. I've matured. And I still might think regarding something like when I first found out about adulterous remarriages, that a, that remarriage for me would be adultery. I said, God, how can this be? I have put up with so much. I put my kids first after divorce. I tried so hard and he didn't try at all. And he's made life so hard for me. How can I be paying in this way because of all that he's done? Those were the things that I was saying, thinking and saying once I realized that a uh, remarriage for me would be adultery. And I thought God set the bar too high, but you know what? He didn't. And I didn't stay in that real long. Thank heaven. There was a day when I would have. Um, but I just know all that God has done for me. And so it didn't take me too long. To It took me a while to grasp it. I'll tell you that much. But to fully grasp it, because we have adulterous marriages all over the place, Christian and non-Christian, remarriages, multiple marriages. So, but again, let me just say that we aren't going to tell God how it is in his house. He's going to tell us how it is in his house. We abide by his rules. We believe in his son. We are saved by faith through Jesus. And that's not of us. That's a gift too. So God has done so much for us. Just be clear. We're not going to tell God how it is in his house. And that's what the letters community is doing. But they're not again the only ones. There's a lot of Christians in adultery that are telling God. They want to tell God how it is. Or how it should be. Or God won't do that. So we've, we've got to quit doing this. God's going to tell us how it is. We're not going to tell him how it is. We need to get that straight, all of us. So anyway, wanted to share the Sparkle Creed with you. I will link it in the description. Uh, have a good day, fam. I will see you soon.